Welcome, and thank you for joining us for session two of our Retailer to Retailer Marketplace Forum. Today's session is Fast Track Your Social Media Following. If you were able to join us last week, we had on Mary Liz Curtin from Leon and Lulu in Clawson, Michigan, where she's the owner, and she inspired us with some great stories, some great videos, tips on being yourself, have fun. If you make a mistake, oh well. We also talked a little bit about different things that we've been doing at DNA and why we wanted to have this marketplace forum. So over the past year or so, we've been thinking to ourselves, how can we help our customers? sell 24-7, 365 days of the year, to compete against big box stores, to sell when there's snowstorms or rain or whatever is going on. Over the past few months, the conversations have heated up a little bit more. What can we do to be a good partner to retailers? One of the things we did is we had a retailer come on and talk to our entire sales team, share some very simple steps to get started, and then our rep shared that with some of our customers. We saw people do their first Facebook Live ever. We saw people selling gift baskets, gift boxes, curbside pickup. And just the innovation was amazing. The conversation kept going, though. What more can we do for retailers? And this Marketplace Forum came up. Let's have on retailers that are selling on social media all the time, let's have them come on and talk to other retailers to help them get started. And that's how this came about. So again, thank you for joining us. If you were not here for session two, session one, pardon me, then at the end, there's gonna be my email address up. Please email me. I can send you a link to our first session. Or if you were on the first session and wanna rewatch it or send it to someone else to watch, please just let us know. Again, my email address will be up at the end. Without further ado though, we're gonna get started with session two. Fast track your social media following. As I mentioned earlier, we had a retailer come on and talk to our entire sales team. Her name is Lindsay Schumann. She's the owner of White Tree Boutique in Akron, Ohio. And Lindsay was selling the entire time the last few months. She started out only doing Facebook Lives and about a year ago purchased a brick and mortar and added on a website. But the past few months, she's continued to sell on Facebook and Instagram. She's the one that spoke to our sales team. She's been really busy now that Ohio has opened up, but because she's my niece, she felt she had to join us anyway today. So thank you, Lindsay. How are you today, Linz? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Awesome. Can you just um, maybe take a couple of minutes and tell us about your retail history? Yes. Well, um, so we started White Tree Boutique um, in actually January of 2018. So we've been in business for two years, um, but we started with doing online Facebook flash sales, um, which basically just means that you post an item that you're selling and people can comment on the item. And so you basically sell what you have. So if I have two smalls, two mediums, two larges, we would do that. So I'm, I'm primarily a clothing boutique. We do accessories, uh, also shoes, things like that. But we do um, sell women's clothing in all sizes. So we would have different friends of mine actually post um, I take pictures of them in the clothes we post the pictures we describe the item and then they would purchase just on Facebook only so our entire business was done through Facebook for a year and two months before we opened up our brick-and-mortar store last April um, and we really just opened the store because we were building such a great community locally and people were ending up shopping at my house once a week it was getting a little crazy <laughs> My kitchen actually turned into um, a boutique in my little kitchen nook. I had clothing racks set up, and once a week they would come in and shop with me um, because so many women wanted to try on the clothes. So anyways, it just became that we needed um, to open a store to be able to free my home up from the constant <laughs> traffic of women. But, um, 
but we did it only online for over a year. So that's kind of where we started. Well, I think that leads us to a great question. Why social media? Isn't a brick and mortar enough or having a website enough? Why social media? Well, it's kind of interesting because um, I actually have a friend of mine who owns a store um, who owns a consignment shop here in the area, a secondhand retail store. And um, she would say to me, why would you ever want to open up a brick and mortar when you can do this all online? But I'm gonna, so I'm going to reverse that question for you. The reason why you want social media more than just a store is because it connects you to the consumer that might never walk in to your own doors. Um, like there's a lot of people that scope out today stores online before they ever go in. So if you think about it, um, especially people like more in my generation or younger, if they hear about a new boutique in town or a new store in town or a cute little gift shop, that just opened up, what are they gonna do first? They're gonna go and check out if they have a Facebook page or if they have an Insta account or if they have a website. So they're gonna look and see, okay, who are these people? Do they have products I like? Is this a place I would want to take the time to drive to, right? So um, social media connects them with the person. Like for instance, a website, it's very formal, right? When you go on, you yes. see, the products, you might see their business hours, you might see maybe the picture of their storefront, but you're not really gonna get the personality of the place. And so social media connects you to the people behind the store and gives them a reason to come and find you. And it's amazing to me, I'm gonna tell you guys this, probably a few different times in a few different ways, but I can't tell you how many times I have personally been stopped in stores or I've had messages sent to me through social media that say, I feel like I know you. Um, I feel like I, I know who you are. I know everything about you and I've never met you yet. Um, and so when they run into me in the store, they'll be like, oh my gosh, are you Lindsay from White Tree? I watch your live videos every week, but I've never been in the store yet. Well, what they're doing is they're kind of, it's almost like they're dating me right until they cut like that actual like visit is like a commitment <laughs> so i think that that's kind of how i view social media it's almost like where you can like kind of behind the scenes stalk somebody or business to see whether or not it's something that you want to invest in as a person and as a consumer and for me when they do come to the store i'm they're ready they're ready to spend they're ready I don't get a lot of window shoppers. I would say 98% of the people that shop with us buy something. We don't have the in and the outs. Um, and I think a lot of it comes from the fact that they're watching us and they know what we already have. So they came in to get something. That's funny. You mentioned to me off offline here that your kids think you're very uh, popular and that you're a star because people come up to you in the <laughs> middle of a restaurant or somewhere. So yeah. I can understand that. They actually think I'm famous. My daughter tells people that I'm famous and I'm like, no, I'm not. But like we were at Chipotle last year. This is just before our store opened. So we've never, we didn't have a brick and mortar. Um, and we were in line and this woman comes up to me with her children and she's like, oh my gosh, are you Lindsay from White Tree? And my daughter's like, like looks at me like, what is she doing? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And she's like, I'm Carrie. I order from you all the time. So I just like, you, you got to know that the social media aspect puts a personal touch to everything you're doing. And it makes people feel like they know you. And that's a powerful thing in consumerism and for people to buy. So 100% agree. I mean, our business is so based on relationship. And I love that you use the word connect. You get to connect to your customers. They get to connect to you. We're gonna now take a look at your uh, business Facebook page. Okay. Tell us a little bit about why it's so important to have that business Facebook page. Well, okay, so there's two different kinds of ways that you can connect with your audience on Facebook as a business. Um, the first one is definitely um, that you wanna establish a business page for multiple reasons. If you see on the right side, he just kind of scrolled past it, but it has your hours, it has your website, it has your phone number, just like a website would. 
Um, and so you want to be able to and your address, <laughs> your address too, which is important. They need to find you. Um, that's going to give them a way for them to connect with you in person. But everything else on the page is giving like them a little taste of everything that you're offering. Like today, we have a big sale going on this week. Um, so if you notice on my sale, um, I put a picture of one of our curvy girls and one of our regular size models to show them that we do all sizes. Um, I did a live video yesterday talking about some of the new products that we had in store. Um, so live videos um, are a huge part of our business and connecting with our audience, which is why people feel like they knew me because I talk about my kids on those videos. We laugh, we, we tell stories. My mom is on that video that you just showed a second ago. Um, she works at my store and she's 65. So a lot of, um, we do have a lot of different ages that shop with us. Um, but anyways, the business page will connect your audience to more of a professional side of the business um, while also connecting you to or connecting them to you. Um, so if you don't have a business page on Facebook, you really don't look like a credible business. You look like a woman um, like who's selling Mary Kay. I mean, not to knock that at all, but do you know what I'm saying? You don't look like you are in the marketplace as a retailer in that kind of business. So you definitely want to have a full blown business page. Um, so those are the perks of, of that particularly. Um, you also can run ads through Facebook through your business page. And if you don't have one, you cannot run an ad as a legitimate business. Um, so we, we run ads every once in a while if we just feel like it's a slower season and we want to tell people that we're here in the area. Um, and because they can shop on our website too, that's a powerful thing that they can just click and look at all the different products that we offer. Um, so yeah, that definitely is reason why to have a Facebook business page. They're very easy to set up too, um, just to encourage people who don't have one right now. Um, Facebook makes everything super duper simple. Um, and if you notice at the top of our page, instead of posting our logo, which we have a logo or any of that, we put pictures of our, our girls. Like these are women just like them. Um, so that they feel like, Oh wow. Like I could wear that or I kind of look like her. Um, and so we make sure we kind of hit all the sizes and all the genres. Another powerful thing that I see what Dennis is doing over there. You can actually click on the reviews on our website. Um, which is something else that people do like especially the younger generation loves yelp they yelp everything like what restaurant they're going to go to they're going to yelp it read the reviews that people are saying about us best customer service ever the environment is warm trendy and inviting best women around loving the positive attitude i mean we can just you can just scroll through them we have a five out of five rating and our people constantly review us and it makes us more credible so I think a lot of that comes from what you were saying, Lindsay, is connection with people. A couple of things that I noticed on your website that really helps people to connect to you is you have pictures, like you said, of the girls and the ladies who work in the shop, their names, a little bit about them. So people come in and they recognize a face. Something else I noticed on your website too was the videos. It's not all product. You and I talked about that. You had a video that was a makeup tutorial, another video on how to clean out your closet and what was staying in trend, what to keep, what to get rid of. Those things are all important. I just read a Salesforce blog and it was talking about retailers. And it says a study of consumers found that 84% of customers say the experience a customer provides is as important as the products and services. So 84% think the experience is just as important as the products. So let's talk about another experience you give your customers. You have a VIP Facebook group. What's important about that? Well, we started just with the Facebook group originally because I told you we were doing flash sales and um, what groups will allow you to do is have a lot more conversation. Um, people can post pictures themselves. It doesn't have to be just the administrator of the page, um, which is really cool because um, if you're a part of our White Tree VIP page, uh, you know, I would say about once a week or so, people will drop pictures of what they're wearing. Oh my gosh, I love this top. This is the best thing I've ever bought. It's so soft or whatever. 
um, or they'll post pictures of their daughter and the clothes that they bought her, whatever. So it just connects each other because it's more, I mean, if somebody else posts a picture of my clothes, that's more powerful than me posting a picture of my clothes. And so the group actually becomes like a community where they know each other. They talk to one another. Um, it's kind of fun. So we actually have over 5,000, I think it's, well, maybe it's just around 5,000 followers in that group. And um, that's how we built our entire business. Um, even on Facebook back in the day when we were just a Facebook store, I would sell close to $4,000 a week just on Facebook. That's crazy. Amazing. That's a lot of money. Um, and that's just me in my basement um, <laughs> and, and a little cell phone, literally snapping pictures in my bedroom of clothes. I mean, and that's how, that's how social media works though. It's crazy. Um, you don't have to be a professional photographer. You don't have to have all these special tricks. You just have to be yourself and somehow find a way to connect with your audience. So the group page actually just kind of created more of a community for people to feel like they were a part of something. So a lot of times the same videos that I'm making on or posting on the White Tree business page are also going to the White Tree VIP, but I will get more interaction and comments on the VIP page. Um, if I share something personally, like I do that sometimes, I just share things about what I think beauty looks like or um, talk about my own struggles with my body image or things like that, which is just a whole different level of kind of vulnerability. But social media connects those women then to that. So what's amazing about it is on the group page, I'll get a hundred comments when I talk about something that is wow. personal to me. But on the business page, I'll get like seven see the difference so it yeah. becomes more of of like a place where people feel like they have a little more freedom to talk about things or to share things so um because it's private it's closed off it's not public knowledge or whatever so so there's two benefits <clears throat> so just to reiterate for a second we we know social media is powerful it's important to have that biz, business page it's a great idea and, and really powerful to build connection, having that VIP group. And you call it a VIP group, but it's not VIPs. You let everybody in, which I, I think is you know, a great way to market it. Um, but saying that it's a VIP, so that's very smart. So can you give some concrete steps though, how to build some followers? Because all these things are great if you have people following you, how do you get those people to follow you okay well i'm real quick i'm gonna add, i'm gonna answer your question but i'm also gonna answer jesse's question because i see that there was a chat question um you do want to be able to create great images so if you saw like the buy one get one 40 percent off how did i do that um i use a couple of different apps i will give you guys a couple of quick apps that are i think i think they're under two dollars to buy or free um i use the pick collage app pic space collage c-o-l-l-a-g-e um that's the one i did the buy one get one free i think if you pay a dollar 99 you don't get their little watermark at the bottom which looks tacky so just pay the dollar 99 i mean come on it's not that much money <laughs> um typography is one of my favorite apps um and actually i sent you two of those kind of tip things last night those were made with typography Typography is a, um, it's a really cool thing where you can take images and put awesome text over top of them. Um, and I make almost all my images that way for sales, for like tonight, we're gonna do our live from White Tree at 7 p.m. You guys are invited to watch um, and see what we do on our live videos. Um, I will post today something that says live from White Tree at 7 p.m. and I will use that app. So those are the two apps I use the most. Um, really, you don't need anything else. Um, so that I, that's Jesse's question, but you want great pictures. You need something great to start off with. Um, to build your following, you have to have some credibility. That's why on social media, the quality of your images, the lighting that you choose, um, even how you edit them, you, you want them to be bright and exciting images. You don't want them to be dull and boring and dark. Um, so that's kind of the first tip. You definitely want to use that. Um, but the other thing that you definitely also want to do to build your following is come up with some kind of quick, quick things that will help you really fast build 100 followers, 200 followers. You don't want to do a live video and you only have five people 
that even could see it, right? Um, so the first thing that we did is we do like and share com contests. Um, co what that means is that you like our page and you share this post and you're gonna be entered into a drawing for $50 and free product to come and shop at our store. $50 gift card, that sounds better, gift card. Um, or you could do an item that you wanna give away. I recommend gift cards if you're really trying to get customers to come in um, because online customers will remain online customers unless they get their little tushies into the store. And um, you know you got way more in store than you do on your website or on your Facebook. So when you come into the store, they're always like, oh my gosh, you guys have so much more than I thought you would because obviously we're not putting it all up there. Um, so that's huge. You want to do those contests. You want to create um, kind of an exciting thing that's happening. If you just open up your Facebook page and just be like, hey guys, we're so excited to share that we have a new Facebook page. You're invited to come. We're going to be offering contests. We're going to be offering um, coupons on there. We're going to be offering um, an opportunity for you to share what you want to see in our store. I do polls on there. Polls will bring people to your store. Um, you know, things like that. So I think, I think it, um, as far as like building your following, the biggest thing you want to do is get the word out. And then you want to do contests that they have to like and share your business. Because if they share it, then their friends are going to hopefully like your business page and share it and so on and so forth. So we built, I would say we built about $2,000, 2000 2000 person following within about two months. If you are really, really solid on um, just keeping those contests going and then you draw names for those contests and you do a live video to draw the name and you, you make them so exciting for people to want to win and want to be a part of. Um, you also want to do things that are more than your product. So like, for instance, like, like the makeup tutorial, my, one of our models, she also works for me. Her name's Cassandra. She's the real dark haired model on my store. Um, she is amazing at makeup and people are always saying to her, how do you do your makeup? Oh my gosh, your makeup is so gorgeous. And so during the quarantine, I was like, Hey, will you do a tutorial? We had a lot of views on that video. Plus people were sharing that video. Um, they were commenting, talking to her. She was talking to them. There's so many, there's so much communication happening during that time. And it was like a 45 minute live video while she did her entire makeup face. Um, and, but the whole point was, is that people who never would have looked at my page as a boutique now were looking around because of her makeup video. Um, so think about ways that you can kind of draw people in, have fun be creative, make people want to come back and check out what you're doing. Um, and I think that one of the things that I do the most or the, and I feel like even the best, cause I watch a lot of different boutiques, you guys, but we are constantly putting ourselves in the camera. So I'm not like a selfie holic. Don't think that I'm like full of myself. The reason why I do it is because they want to see that I'm there. There was, there was one day you guys, no joke. We had no customers. It was like the slowest morning. So me and Cassandra were there and I said, hey, let's take some pictures of us um, and say, guys, we wanna see your faces. Come out and visit us today. We ended that day with 20 customers. I couldn't believe it. We are a small little store, you guys. 20 customers is a lot for us in a day. I think our sales were like close to $2,000 because we said, hey, Cassandra and I are working together today. Come out and see us. And people came because of us like that it, it happens it, it works so so be yourself and get out there um, and draw people in to who you are and let them be a part of their experience too Lindsay let me ask you a couple quick questions here as we're getting um, you know backing up on time a little bit how often do you post I think people will want to know that usually once a day or twice a day max I really don't do like these crazy things where you post every hour or something ridiculous. People get annoyed with that. Um, so I usually post in the morning and kind of tell them what's going on for the day. Sometimes I'll post later in the day and be like, oh, by the way, you know, uh, I also address a lot of our posts with like, hey, friends, today's a beautiful day. Because um, they know, they, they really are our friends. Um, I, I will answer Jennifer's question too. I just found my friends. So... I have. Can you let Can you let everybody know the question? They may not. Oh, have I'm seen sorry. It. That's okay. Um, 
how did I find models? Honestly, uh, so I started off modeling. That was terrible. I don't like modeling. Um, my sister-in-law said, okay, fine, I'll help you. So that was how I got her drug into it. Um, and then Cassandra started working for me and she's gorgeous. And I said, hey, would you model for me? So really, honestly, I just, I just kind of found these people. Um, I had a new model last week. She's a customer um, who's a curvy girl and she's beautiful and she just said yes to modeling for me last minute so I kind of wing it in that way but I will say don't get carried don't get caught up in um having to be perfect um definitely be yourself and do what you can with what you have if you need models um then you can also put it out there but my models just get something free from the store every week for modeling I don't pay them like some crazy amount of money um, they think it's an honor to be a part of what we're doing. So we just give away free clothes and have some fun. That was probably, I think the first time I called you, Lindsay, was to compliment you about your models because you, you didn't just fit them into a stereotype. You just, you just brought in people and it was so awesome. So thank you for that. I wanted to sh uh, just embellish a little bit on a couple things you said. One okay. was giving away a gift card you told me a story about how the person that won a $50 gift card came into the store to collect it. She ended up spending $125. So amazing. It, it brings people into the store and they buy more. Another yeah. story you shared was about your mother-in-law, how she saw a video. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not everybody's a boutique. They were a garden center. Yes. The people put on a video on their Facebook of how to pot a plant because your mother-in-law saw that, she drove 45 minutes to go buy their plants because yeah. she thought they must have the best plants uh, because she saw that video. So it's, it's not, again, all about clothing. I just wanted to share that so because there's probably people on here with different types of stores. Yes, and I think what, when I share that story, I think the power of social media is that it's amazing to see how it can influence you. Um, so you talk about social media influence. That's a word we use all the time. What, what we try to do is we want to bring such a positive influence into these women's homes every day. So I post encouraging um, things. I, we post all different things to just make them feel warm and fuzzy when they think about White Tree Boutique. That's what I want them to feel. I want them to feel empowered, that they're beautiful of, in all sizes. So that's why sometimes I post pictures where I'm not perfectly made up or whatever. Um, because I'm a normal person too, you know, and I think that's what the beauty of social media is that I can look really good and I can make a, I can take a camera ready picture, but I can also just be like them in my sweats, you know, and, um, they get to see both sides of that. Um, so I think that what you're saying is so good because yes, I'm a clothing boutique, but this goes for every business. They really just want to know who you are and what you have and what you're going to offer them friendship, you know, laughter, um, fun. Is your store cute? Show pictures of your store, you know, give tours of your store. That's another great way of building your following. Do a little 30 second tour of the store um, and have that be shared by friends or like and share this video and tell them about it. And you can win a contest to come in and, you know, have a little shopping spree. Um, I also do shopping sprees with your friends. So, hey, you and a friend are both going to get $50 or then there's two people coming in. So yeah. I do things like that too. That's awesome. So as we're wrapping up a little bit here, Lindsay, you and I again talked a little bit offline and you said, Hey, let everybody know, follow me, take things that you see on my website. Just, can you just share that for one minute real quick? Yeah. I mean, everything that I do, you guys can, <laughs> you can totally copy it. I don't care. Um, actually, a lot of the things that I've learned, I've copied in, to some degree and then added my own little personality or twist to it. Um, I think it's important that you find your own groove and your own rhythm and you just run with that. Um, but I will tell you, like, there's, there are some really bad ways that people do Facebook and stuff, and you don't want to get into that groove. Okay, so you want to follow people who are doing it well, who are getting good responses, and kind of try to emulate that. Because I've seen people do live videos where you're like looking up their nose the entire time. Like, that's not good. You know, get a, get a tripod and a selfie stick or something if you, if you can't hold your camera right um, with your hand. 
or, um, you know what, you know what I'm trying to say. So you don't want to, I don't need to go into that. Everybody knows those bad videos we've seen. Um, but you definitely want to find your rhythm and be yourself. And you guys are welcome to, um, any contests that we're running sales, we're running things like that, that we do try, you know, try some stuff out and see how it works. Um, Dennis did ask me, how hard is it to set up a Facebook business page? It is very easy. Um, so Facebook walks you through it. It's almost like you fill in the blanks. So it's really not complicated at all. And I would encourage you to do it today if you don't have one. Well, I, I know we've uh, mentioned Facebook a lot. I know you also have an Instagram page. Could, could you just share real briefly about that? Yeah, I mean, so it just depends on who your audience is. Um, we do have customers who don't have Facebook pages. And so we, we post on both. Um, we, I'm not as good with Instagram, to be honest. It is a whole different platform. So I actually have somebody who monitors and who helps me on Instagram just to keep that alive and functional. Um, and I pay her $50 a week. That's that's the true pay that I give her. She's just a, somebody who spends about two hours a week on it for me, but it's good money for her and it's good for me. Um, so if you're not really, that's another tip I could give. If, if this isn't really your thing, if this is not your speed and you're like, whoa, I don't know even how to do any of the things you just said, I would encourage you to find somebody, whether it's an employee at your store, it's your, your, you know, somebody you work with, a ch your daughter, your niece, your cousin, your anybody, son, <laughs> um, whoever, I don't know everybody's ages on here, but whoever you are, find somebody who has some sort of excitement about this for you. They don't have to be super knowledgeable or even professional, but just excited for you to get um, your business going in this way and, and ask them to kind of pitch in and help you out. Maybe pay them a little bit of money like that or do something that will encourage them to keep working for you. Um, <laughs> but, but it is totally going to grow your business. I want to give you this example. When we had to close our store because there was a snowstorm in Ohio, which happens, you know, oh, often here. Um, I was like so bummed out because I was like, oh no, like we, if we close our store, nobody's going to come in today. We need this, you know, we need these sales. Well, then it just dawned on me. I'm like, I'm going to get on Facebook and I'm going to say, Hey friends, <laughs> we're closed today. I want to keep my staff safe. So we're going to let these ladies stay home and snuggle with their babies. Well, the snow falls. I just want to offer you a snow sale. And so we put out this giant sale. We sold almost a thousand dollars that day online. Wow. Um, and we do have a website so they can just purchase right through the website, but Facebook connects them to the website over and over and over again. If you see every post I make, I'm posting our website because they can't buy on Facebook anymore. Um, like they used to be able to. Um, so we had a good day instead of a terrible day. And that's, yeah. that's the difference of what Facebook can do. Also when Ohio opened back up and this is the last example I'll give you, but um, when Ohio opened back up, they were only doing um, appointments. They were allowing stores to open by appointment only. Well, we sent it out in our email and we got about two people signed up. That's the truth. We put it on Facebook and I got about 30 women who signed up for appointments. That's the difference. So email is almost like a thing of the past in a way. It's not, but it is. It's like you use them only when you have to. But Facebook is now the place where they're finding all their information from or Instagram. They're pulling things off of there. So you definitely want to be creative um, in that avenue because you could grow your business. We had a grand opening you know, weekend again, when we were able to open our store two weeks ago, and it was a fantastic sales weekend because of our appointments. And Facebook is the reason why we had so many appointments. So. Well, you mentioned something, having someone else help you, which we talked about last week too, is having a caretaker. You know, if you're not the person, then, hey, hire someone, or you might have a relative or someone in the store that's passionate about social media. Mary Liz said the same thing last week. She said, I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. So <laughs> she said, I leave that to other people to help take care of it. So that's important. And I think you also provided a segue into, you know, what we're going to talk about with session three next week is about websites and different things like that. Taking, and it's going to be called taking your store to the next level. And you're going to join us again next week, right? Yeah, I'm excited. You feel pressured because I'm your uncle and you have to say yes, but I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> 
So if I'm you really could just give one, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm really passionate though. I love to help people understand that there's more out there because like, I wish people had done this for me. I had to really learn things the hard way. So when you guys were talking about this, when Dennis and Phil like approached me about this, I was like, yes, because I wish that somebody had given me a little more excitement, a little more information behind things when I was trying to figure it out. So I'm just glad to help. Definitely. So as we wrap up here, I know Dennis is going to put a slide up for me. I said earlier, if you want a link to the first session or you want a link to this session, Lindsay's also going to provide some take home tips, some easy steps. You mentioned those slides you made with what was that app called again? Typography. Typography. We're going to include all of that. We want retailers to walk away equipped to begin this journey. So my email is up there phil at dnasales.com. If you just email me your name, store name, where you're located, hey, I want Lindsay's information, we'll have that all there. You can find her on Facebook by searching for White Tree Boutique, Akron, Ohio. And thank you so much, Lindsay, for taking your time and having the passion about this to share with people. We really appreciate it and appreciate all the help you've already given us. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, our website is also shopwhitetree.com. So if you want to see, you know, kind of how we integrate Facebook into our website as well and kind of like connect them together, um, then you can check that out as well. We invite you guys to, to look around. <laughs> Next week, we're going to be talking about how to get your website um, and some other ways of like taking your technology to a good level. Um, that will help you to create more um, sales and excitement too, so. And to yeah. integrate them all, we talked about too. So how can you integrate everything together, which is super important. And it is, it is, it is an important thing to know how to do that in this age, it is. Um, to be able to create so many outlets for those rainy days that we just recently had. <laughs> <laughs> well, lastly, I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Again, any questions, comments, anything, you can email me, phil at dnasales.com. It's, it's real simple, so I don't forget it. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. And this is the end of session two. Join us next week, session three. The same links will work for next week as well. Share it with a friend. Bring on a caretaker. We just hope it's been meaningful and helpful. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.